Getting even the smallest detail wrong in your accounts payable function can result in significant losses, money that is sometimes not recoverable, or if it is, only after considerable efforts and expense on your part. Better to not make these mistakes in the first place and use these efforts and funds for more value-add endeavors. And there are so many places in accounts payable where mistakes slip through, allowing duplicate payments and even worse, fraud to occur. And more often than you might imagine, the company doesn't even realize it. I've spent the last 25 years talking with both controllers, both corporate controllers and financial controllers, accountants and accounts payable professionals, zeroing in on the problems and issues that plague the accounts payable function and finding solutions for these problems. I continue to be amazed at the number of issues that, at first glance, appear trivial and irrelevant, yet can cause devastating losses when they are ignored. We've devised a series of seven questions to help you zero in on these issues. For each, we'll not only tell you how you should be addressing the problem, but we'll explain why. Do you think you can get them all right? Let's see. Feel free to stop the video before I reveal the best practice answer and decide what you do. Then you can see if your ma answer matches up to what I say is the best practice. And if it doesn't, hopefully my explanation will help. Not so obvious question number one. Do you think that your, that your suppliers automatically return duplicate payments or give you a credit and send a credit memo? Best practice answer, no. Here's my explanation why. Some do, without a doubt, some are very good about returning the, the payment or issuing a credit memo and sending it to you. But some don't send the credit memo, some don't even issue it, and even when they send the credit memo, sometimes it doesn't get to your accounts payable staff or, and some, even though they send the credit memo, it either never makes it to your accounts payable staff, or if they do, maybe you have a new employee and that person doesn't know what to do with the credit memo. So that's why I make such a big deal about best practices in accounts payable, because we want to make sure these payments, these extra payments don't happen. Okay, moving right along. Not so obvious question number Number two, do you get company credit back, credit cards, be they for travel, the company P card, or maybe a fuel card, back from your employees when they leave the company and, and this and is really important, immediately cancel them with the bank? Best practice answer, yes. Well, you probably figured out, because I made such a big deal about the and, cancel them with the bank immediately, that that's an important component. Why? Let me explain. Some people think if they get the cards back, they're, they're covered. But if the employee wrote down the card number, wrote down the explanation, the expiration date, and that three digit number, the three or four digit number, then they can still use that card online to go shopping. Now, what happens sometimes is HR does not inform accounts payable or whoever's responsible for the card program immediately that the employee, the, the employee has terminated and the employee can't notify the bank because without notifying the bank, that card is still active. And if they you know, write down the card number, then they can go charging to their heart's content on online. So what can you do if HR doesn't tell you? And I don't know why, by the way, this continues to be an issue, but many, many companies have the problem. HR doesn't notify uh, uh, accounts payable. What you can do is, is two things. You can run two reports. Number one, you want to run your inactive cards against your current employee, see where those inactive cards are, and then investigate. And oftentimes the reason the card is inactive is because the employee is left. You want to cancel it at that. The other thing that you can do is get a list of your current employees and run that against the list of your current cards and anytime somebody who's on the card list but not on the employee list then you want to cancel that card also not so obvious question number three do you rely on that notification from IT that indicates if an email is from an external source if it doesn't have that little little red notice on it saying uh, warning email from external source or something like it do you feel comfortable in doing whatever that email indicates? best practice answer 
No. Why? Because criminals have figured out how to defeat that technology. And so um, if they're perpetrating a fraud, some of them have figured out how they can get that warning notice off the email. So you'll think it was an internal email and you'll go ahead and do the rush wire transfer or whatever else the criminal is requesting. So your verification routines need to continue to be on even if that when, when that little warning notice does not appear. Not so obvious question number four. Is your accounts payable policy and procedures manual updated regularly? And by regularly, I mean every single time you make a change. Best practice answer, yes. Why is this so important? Because if something happens to your accounts payable team and they are all quit or they're all in some horrible accident or whatever, you need to have the documentation you need so you can continue to get the bills played and keep the lights on, keep the company running. Think about it this way. Let's say all your accounts payable team chipped in and bought a lottery ticket for one of those big lotteries, you know, the $800 million, and they won, and they all quit at the same time. Would you have the documentation in place so that you could continue running the company from the accounts payable function? That's why we say every single time. Not so obvious question number five. When setting up a new vendor in the master vendor file, do you match the supplier address against the addresses in your HR file? Best practice answer, yes, you should be doing this. It only takes a minute or two, so this is not an onerous uh, task. Why is it so important? Because it will help weed out an employee who is trying to set up a phony supplier in your master vendor file. And you know, if they're trying to set up a phony vendor in the master vendor file, there is not a good reason why they're doing this. So you want to weed it out before any problems can, can be generated. If you'd like us to produce more videos of this sort, please hit the like button. Your input is really important to us. Not so obvious question number six. Do you verify a change of bank account information if that change is noted on an invoice that is emailed from the, the supplier? Best practice answer, yes. Why? Now, at first glance, it might seem like, well, I got the email from the, the supplier, um, and that email is legitimate, and their e invoice is legitimate, so why can't I just use that information? What has unfolded recently are instances where the criminals, they don't infiltrate your email system, they infiltrate the supplier's email system, and they've made the change on the invoice. So the invoice is a legitimate one, except for that particular change, and the supplier did send it out. Now, at first glance, at least to, to my way of thinking, the supplier is responsible and they still owe you the money. That's not how the cases are uh, uh, falling out, but of course I don't know all the details of the cases. But even if the supplier ultimately is responsible and they uh, ultimately do have to give you credit for that, you're still going to waste a lot of your employees' time and efforts trying to get that matter resolved. So better to take a little bit of time up front, figure out that, hey, this change was not legitimate, and then, by the way, you're doing your supplier a favor because you're notifying them, you're letting them know that this is going on, and they can stop uh, the frauds going on with other customers of theirs, and hopefully they will be grateful to you because you've just saved them a big headache. But even if they're not, you've saved yourself a lot of aggravation. Not so obvious question number seven. Do you rely on the invoice number as the sole method for detecting a duplicate invoice? Best practice answer, no. Now initially, I'm gonna be honest, when I heard about this feature that's in, in many of the ERP systems that are available today, I thought this is great, this is the silver bullet, we won't have this problem anymore. But that is not how it is rolled out. Why? Well, for starters, when you're relying on that invoice number, you assume that your processor, when they were entering the invoice, invoice data entered the invoice number correctly, and that may or may not be a safe assumption. That's number one. Number two, and it, it pains me to share this, but it, it is what it is, some suppliers will change the invoice number when they send a second and third invoice. Now, sometimes they'll do it um, in a very simple manner so it's easier for you to track. So for example, if the invoice number was of the first invoice was 12345, the second copy of the invoice that they sent will have the, the invoice number uh, 12345A. If they send a second one, 12345B, etc. But that's not always the case. And in the real world, you know, the one where you and I both live, uh, sometimes it's given a completely different number. You can ask them not to do this, but you, that's, you know, 
you're not in a winning position. If they're doing it for everybody, they're not going to stop doing it for you. So you, yes, that's the first place to look when you're trying to say, hey, is this a, a duplicate invoice? But um, that's just the first place. It's not the only step you should be taking to verify that an invoice is um, not a duplicate. So as you probably can tell, the, checking this invoice number is just the beginning of the process to verify the accuracy of the information on the invoice before you your people pay it. To ensure that you are not paying it too much, most best practice organizations rely heavily on the three-way match. We think the three-way match is so important. We did a thorough investigation of all the facets around it, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description.